Hi folks, Tim Newman with Soft Light Studios and it's time for another Living with Lightroom tutorial. As you might recall, in the last two Living with Lightroom tutorials, we spent some time looking at Lightroom's crop tool, which is deceptively way more powerful than it appears on the surface. It's really, really a great tool. I use it all the time in my editing workflow. This time, we're going to jump back into the crop tool. We're going to take a look at a lot of the crop overlays. Well, in fact, all of them. We're going to take a look at setting orientation on those crop overlays. Some of the default settings that you can make in Lightroom for the way that those overlays and those orientations appear. And then last but not least, we are going to take a look at the aspect ratios that are set up in one of the overlay guides and we're going to take a look at aspect ratios in general and how to think of them when you're working with them in Lightroom. Let's take a look in Lightroom. As you might recall from our last Lightroom video on the crop tool, we had explored a couple of interesting concepts. One is the R shortcut key and that works on both Mac or Windows that could be used from anywhere within Lightroom that quickly takes us into the develop module with the crop tool loaded up and ready to go. And as a part of that exploration, we looked at crop overlays like the one that you are seeing here right now. This is the rule of thirds crop overlay. And essentially it is lending itself to helping the photographer to identify both horizontal and vertical thirds within the image, as well as the intersecting points that we often say is the area where we want to put points of interest in the image. So that's what we're looking at right here is that rule of thirds crop overlay. And you might recall from the last video, I said it's possible that you wouldn't be on the same overlay that I was on. It wasn't very likely if you hadn't used the tool before, but it could happen. And you might remember that we said the O shortcut key would cycle us through all of the available crop overlays, as you see happening here by me hitting the O key repeatedly. Now, you might not see the exact same crop overlay guides as I just saw here as I cycled through mine. And at first blush, that might be confusing to you, but the answer to all of that and what these crop overlays represent is found up here in the Tools menu. And in the Tools menu, if we click on that and it opens up, you'll see that second from the bottom is the menu choice Crop Guide Overlay. And if you look over here, and I'm just going to hover here to keep this menu box loaded up so you can see it, you can see that there are a collection of overlays. There's a grid overlay, which you might recall having seen as we cycled through there. You also see the grid overlay anytime that you use the rotate function with the crop. Um, you'll also see that there's the thirds overlay and there's a check mark next to it indicating that of course that's the one that's active right now. There is the diagonal crop overlay, the triangular crop overlay, a golden ratio crop overlay, golden spiral crop overlay, and then there is a collection of aspect ratios that can be displayed as a crop overlay. So these are all of the crop overlays that are available in Lightroom. Now I'm not going to go into the guides or the concepts of each of these overlays. I just want to point out that they're here. If you want to learn more about the triangle rule of composition or the golden ratio or golden spiral, please Google those and do some research on them. I think you'll find them interesting. Whether or not you apply them up to your personal photography is up to you, but they are all here and available for you to use in Lightroom. Okay. Now, a couple other things I want to point out while we're here in this menu. One is the cycle grid overlay command, and that is the uh, shortcut key O shown next to it to the right. So if you can't remember the O key that I've told you about here a couple of times, come up here to tools, look at crop guide overlay, and you'll see, ah, yes, O is the shortcut key for cycling the grid overlay. Right below that, you will see that there is another shortcut key, a shift O, and that is for cycling the grid overlay orientation. Well, let's check that out. So we're going to come back out of this menu. We're just going to click over here off to the side, and we're going to try that. We'll do a shift O here. Not doing a whole lot, 
but then I wouldn't expect it to on the rule of thirds overlay. Those should be pretty much even divisions horizontally and vertically, and there shouldn't be any orientation change there. Let's hit the OK and go to another crop overlay. That one looks pretty uniform. Let's try the Shift over there, Shift O command there. Nope, not seeing any change. Let's go over here to the triangle. Ah, now that Shift O is showing us a change in orientation. And basically we can see with this triangular overlay tool that our diagonal bisecting line that runs from one corner of the image to the other can start and stop in different locations. And that's what the Shift O does for us with this overlay. I'm gonna hit the O key to go to the next overlay. That one I'm not gonna see any difference in. So my Shift O key isn't gonna have any function there. We're gonna go over to the golden spiral overlay and if I do the shift O key there you can see that it has a number of different positions that it can orient itself into. So essentially the golden spiral can start in any one of the four corners of the image and that's showing you all the different orientations. Let's hit the O key again. This is the aspect ratio overlay and if I do the shift O key there you can see that my aspect ratios change from being shown here as landscape ratios to portrait ratios that you see here. So that's a really interesting one. I like being able to change that orientation with the Shift-O key. Hit the O key one more time. Wouldn't expect the Shift-O to do much with the grid. Hopefully by now you wouldn't expect that either. And if I hit the O key one more time, I'm back to that rule of thirds crop overlay that we started off with. So this is pretty cool. Now at this point, it's fairly likely that you're seeing all the same overlays that I am, but let's say that you're not. Let's say that as we were going through all of those different overlays, one or two of them didn't show up for you. Well, let's go back to the tools menu and see why that might be. So I'm gonna come here and go to tools, and I'm gonna go to guide overlay, and you'll notice down here, if you stay on the menu and you don't slide off of it like I did, you will see Choose Overlays to Cycle. Well, let's click on that and check that out. And here's our dialog box here. These are all the overlays that can be cycled with the O key. And then correspondingly with the ones that support it can have their orientation changed with the Shift O key. If any one of these is turned off, let's say that I come in here and turn off Golden Ratio and Golden Spiral, and then I click on the O key, the or the OK here at the bottom, the O key will no longer display the golden ratio or the golden spiral overlays when we cycle through it repeatedly. So we can custom tailor which overlays we think we're going to use and which ones we don't think we're going to use. I'm going to turn these back on. As I teach Lightroom a lot, I like to have these available so everybody can see them when I go through this example in class. And I'm going to hit OK to put those back the way they were. The last thing I want to show you here, I'm going to just hit the O key and I'm going to zip around to the aspect ratios overlay right here. So that's just me hitting the O key multiple times until this display popped up here as an overlay and then I stopped. Now, there are lots of other aspect ratios besides the three that you see here. And if I come back up here to the tools menu one more time and I come down to crop guide overlay and I carefully navigate over to this side pop-up menu, you can see at the very bottom there is choose aspect ratios. That's our last choice here in the menu. And if we bring that up, we can see all of the available aspect ratios that are available here in Lightroom as crop overlays. And you can see there's a one by one aspect ratio, which would give us a square crop, an eight and a half by 11 aspect ratio, perfect for printing to a standard size piece of letter paper, four by five, which by the way, if you multiply both of those numbers by two, makes an excellent eight by 10 aspect ratio and conveniently enough, a really great 16 by 20 aspect ratio. You see five by seven here, two by three, which by the way, makes a nice four by six. And you might've heard of eight by 12. So that's where the eight by 12 comes from, is from that aspect ratio. So let's stop here real quickly before we go to the three at the bottom. These aspect ratios that you see up here at the top, do not denote that they are going to make, for example, a four inch by five inch image or a two inch by three inch image. They are going to make crops that leave the aspect ratio at four to five or five to seven or two to three, for example. So if I pick 
a four by five aspect ratio, that could just as easily make a four by five, an eight by 10, or a 16 by 20. And the size that is going to result from that aspect ratio in terms of capability, can I get up to that 16 by 20? Or can I get to a 32 by 40, for example? That's another four by five aspect ratio is all going to come down to the resolution of the image, the number of pixels that are in it. If this happened to be an image that was somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 20 or so megapixels, that four by five aspect ratio would result in a crop that gives us about a 4,000 by 5,000 pixel image. If there is that number of pixels, available in the image. If it's a really, really small image, we've you know taken it with a really small sensor, that might just be 400 by 500 pixels. But you'll note that's still the same aspect ratio. So when we're working with these aspect ratios here, we're not working with a size, we are working with a length to width ratio in all of these. It's important to keep that in mind, okay? All right, now you see some other aspect ratios down here, the four by three, the 16 by nine, and the 16 by 10. These aspect ratios all lend themselves really well to video production. So if I am doing a 16 by nine video, in fact, this one that you're looking at right here would be a 16 by nine aspect ratio, I am working with images that are potentially 1920 by 1080 pixels. That's the aspect ratio there. But I want you to think about that just for a second longer. 3840 pixels by 2160 pixels is also a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. And if you were going to bring that image exported into something like Adobe Premiere, a simple reduction of scale of that image from 100% to 50% would take it from that 3840 and 2160 down to that 1920 and 1080 we need. So these last three here all lend themselves to creating images that are going to work really well in video productions imported in, for example, as still images into a video clip on the timeline. All right. So now that we understand what all these are, the ones that are checked, these that here that you can see in blue, are the ones that are displaying over here right now. You can see them over here in the overlay tool. If I turn on more of these, you can see that more crop overlays quickly begin to appear in Lightroom. Now, what I find is a lot of these I don't use very often. For example, I don't do one-by-one -one crops very often. I don't know why. It's not that I'm opposed to them. I guess I don't think of it. Uh, I don't very often do the 4x3s or the standard definition television. Um, I do high definition video a lot, but I don't do the 16x10 aspect spec ratio that you will see some videos and movies shot in. So those are kind of the standard ones that I use. And quite frankly, I don't take a lot of stuff out of here from Lightroom directly over to my video productions. I typically take that out of Photoshop. So I don't use the 16 by nine all that often. So the ones that you see here, and I'm actually gonna turn off the eight and a half 11 because I don't do that very often either. The ones that you see here, the four by five, the five by seven, and the two by three are all the standard aspect ratios that I typically work with. So those are all the ones that I leave on. And, and I think you might agree that the display becomes much simpler when you limit the number of aspect ratios that you display at any given time. And if I click on OK, you will notice that those are exactly the aspect ratios that are available here. Now, fear not if you leave those off and don't have them available in the overlay tool. You can always come over here to where you have the ability to adjust the aspect ratio for the crop click on the combo box arrow here that drops this down and you can get to any one of these crops directly. So if I really needed this as a 16 by nine, I could simply click on that. And even though it's not displayed as a preset here in the overlay, there is a 16 by nine crop right there. And if I hit return, that is now edited as a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And if I don't like that, um, I can simply come over here to history and 
take that out of there or I can hit the R key and I can come back here and say, you know what, let's take this crop and uh, resize it up. We're locked here. We're going to unlock that. Remember the lock tool from the first video? We're going to unlock that. We're going to take this and uh, we're going to size it back out. And now we're back to the full size image where we originally started. One last thing I'm going to do here. This is just for aesthetic purposes for me, but you can follow along and, and see how I think this is helpful. I'm going to hit that O key for the overlay tool. Back to rule of thirds one more time. Um, I'm going to lock my padlock. We'll talk about another shortcut for this in the next video. Um, so I'm forcing aspect ratio, but I'm going to start to drag my lower left corner up here. And now all of a sudden, as I look at this, I think, hmm, I really like the way that there is the colorful foliage in the foreground, the kind of stark tree trunks in the middle and the green tree trunks at the top. I think that actually, except for that last move that I made there, I think that actually follows the rule of thirds overlay pretty nicely and gives us a pretty good rule of thirds composition. It's not the most solid composition in the world, but I do think it lends itself well to some of the composition rules that we have been thinking about. So I'm going to hit enter there and, uh, there we go. A little more uh, nod to the rule of thirds divisions in the image. Um, so there you go. There's all of the crop tool overlays and the ability to change their orientations and a look at the tools menu up here, specifically the crop guide overlay choices here that will allow you to custom tune these crop overlays and make them really handy to use during your editing process. Okay, let's hop back out of Lightroom and we'll wrap up real quickly. Well, there you have it. Some more inside information on Lightroom's crop tool and the overlays, orientations, and aspect ratios. I think we've got about two more videos that we're going to have coming out in this series that we're going to definitely do one on some of the tips, tricks, and techniques uh, in the crop tool. And uh, we'll take a look at the last one at some special tools, and then we'll visit probably building some custom ratios and some things like that. And then I think we'll probably be wrapped up with Lightroom's crop tool and we'll start on to a new Lightroom series. A couple of things I want to point out real quick. We're building these in YouTube and playlists. So if you look at the descriptions, we are starting to add in links to both the previous and next videos where appropriate and adding in links to the playlist. So we have a lot of Lightroom tutorials. They're all built in a playlist. So look for those links there. Hopefully they'll help you to get your way around the videos that you want to see faster. Last but not least, don't Forget that subscribe button down there wherever it's hovering. That one will help you stay up to date when new videos come out from us. And as we always say, remember, learning equals skills. Practice equals mastery. We'll see you out there.